You are watching the Big Dog Post Game Show, brought to you by Viner Four Gates and the Big Dog himself, Rick Jacklich at the Jacklich Law Group. From rainy and gray Bloomington, Indiana, Maryland gets their hat handed to them and scored not as a really had the score wasn't even as close as the game was. Maryland had a few big plays, couldn't do anything on offense, but the defense was okay for a while, Mason. Yeah, I mean, the, the story of this one's all the injuries for the Terps. Uh, Octavian Smith goes down, doesn't return. Ty Felton goes down, doesn't return. Ty J. Johnson, we saw him coming off on crutches, so I, I can't imagine that's good. Caden Prater goes out, he does return. Uh, it's Dylan, Dylan Wade gets hurt. Caleb Wheatland gets hurt. At one point, Maryland had well, all three of the starting wide receivers were out, but boy, this was a tough one. But when it was 21 all, Maryland flatlines after that, except for what looked like a touchdown for a moment to Prather. Yeah, and from there, I mean, just beat. All the way across the board. Uh, the defense did make plays to keep the game close. Uh, got a lot of turnovers early in the game, but Loxley talks about it constantly. When your defense gives you the ball, you have to do something. But five three and outs in the first half, the inability to run the football, and it's just, it's just not pretty right now. It is not. We're going to do a second part of the post game show after the press conference. This. It's the Big Dog Post Game Show. I'm Wayne Nets. Mason will be back after we talk to Coach Loxley in a few minutes. Hi, I'm Rick Jacklich, and I'm here with another Big Dog, Coach Kevin Willard, coach of our Maryland Terrapins. Coach, we're looking for a giant year from our turf. We're looking forward to a great year here in Maryland. But I hear you're coming off an all-time great year at your law firm with some amazing awards. We've been very blessed, Coach, without a doubt. The awards this year include Best Civil Litigation Firm in the entire state of Maryland, best malpractice law firm in the entire state. That goes along with our other awards we've won over the years, including best personal injury trial law firm in the entire country. But it's not just me, Coach. It's every one of the lawyers in the law firm. That's why we love you, Rick. So Terp fans, if your family's injured in a car crash, you'd be barking mad not to call Rick and the Big Dogs at the Jacklitz Law Group at 855-BIG-DOG-1 and just tell them Coach sent you. Thanks, Coach. And Turp fans, show your support for our coach and our basketball team and all the athletes in Maryland. Buy season tickets to come watch the Terps. And most of all, go, go Terps! Terps. The huddle now as Rourke comes up, the ball's on the one. It's a fantastic touch-up by Ty Felton. Let's widen this out a little bit. to our right, in line tight end, and then here comes the ball, going to Caden, got it, touchdown, Turtles. Well, Mason, that's what you needed to do, and it worked out. And there's your replay up on the scoreboard. Does this come up as a big play as it continues to start raining here? 35, 152 to go in the half. Trouble! And they got a sack by Waitland. Wheatland and Hippolyte really converge there. Well, yeah, timeout did work. Yeah, it worked out. I mean, it's one of those where if you don't get it, you don't get the stop, which has been the case for us this year. You're in trouble, but this defense, they're playing their best at the offense has got to deliver for us. We'll be back in Bloomington in the moment. Thank you. 
91 Howes into the attempt the extra point. Here comes Hemby, going, going, still going, he's gone. Roman Hemby for the Maryland touchdown. Woo! Look at that. After listening to Mike Loxley talk through the game and through the injuries and the overall disappointment, uh, not much that he said was wrong, and we encourage you folks to go watch the post-game press conference. Of course, that's on Wayne Terp. It's on Terp Talk. And take a look, take a listen, because I think this is going to be a, a little rockier season than what we had hoped to see, Mason. Yeah, I mean, you looked at the schedule and you had a lot of opportunities against first-year coached programs now 0 and 2 against those teams uh, third one coming up with David Braun who obviously took over in the interim role last year at Northwestern and kind of caught us on a similar day to today uh, in October last year in Chicago I think that what I heard at least was a lot of um, still maybe looking for some answers that you would think in year six of doing any job at, at that level that you may already have had to face those questions and come up with those answers as more of a CEO than maybe a football coach would, which is what all these guys like to compare uh, their job to. So if you look at, you know, overall money that go goes into something for leadership uh, across the board, coordinators, coaches, at this point you start to maybe think that somebody, not saying the head coach, but somebody's going to need to come in from the outside that may need to change some things or give some recommendations on the discipline of this football team, the preparation of this football team, and um, the offensive line of this football team. Well, look, there's offensive line recruits on the way. And as this part of the season has ended, and we have the bye week, and you start looking back, and you go, Billy has been really good. Billy threw for three touchdown passes, had a good stat line, got sacked a few times. Defense got a bunch of turnovers. Roman Henby had 117 yards, and Maryland really, from about the middle of the third quarter, it wasn't that close. So statistically, not so bad, but in watching, actually watching the game, not so good. Yeah, it seems like, you know, we've, we've kind of hit a gap now. Locks came in, brought in a lot of guys, recruited locally really, really hard, and a lot of those guys have left the program, but there's guys like Roman Hemby who flew under the radar, Dante Trader who wasn't that sought after as a football recruit mm -hmm. that have really come in and made that difference. It's in the last, you know, look at the last three classes, where are those guys? Mm -hmm. And I think that obviously the biggest hole is your offensive line. They've been able to kind of patch it up and get workable groups together with a mix of guys. And this year that group clearly is not that strong. No. Um, well, you know, we have Bruce back in the studio and during the game, of course, we're texting and talking. And you know, he's as upset about the fact that those turnovers didn't turn into points as anything because the chances were there. Bruce, how did it look from the studio? Wayne Mason, you're doing a great job uh, at Indiana at Memorial Stadium, a place I've been to several times, especially when my son was there. Also to Assembly Hall, of course, Indiana, just a great university, a great place. And today they were the better football team. Not to say Maryland didn't have its moments because it did. Three turnovers in the first half, no points. To me, that's the story of the game. Maryland should have been able to get up, and if they got up on this team, took some of their confidence away, it would have been better. Now, Maryland battled back. They fought back every time they fell behind until the very end. Uh, but they kept plugging all the way. Their fight was great, but they didn't have – the offense was just futile in trying to get the run game established. He had that one great run by Roman Hemby that tied it up at 21 with a referee through the best block of the day. All right, but uh, it wasn't enough. And you look at the injuries that uh, Ty Felton, I don't know what it was, but he was out most of the game. And then Prater fell when he made that great catch and they stole the touchdown from him. You know, when things are called one way, 
it's supposed to be unbelievably against. The video has to be against the call to make it, uh, to turn it over. It was so close. It was fractional. First and 10 at the 30 for Maryland. Frankfurt, touchdown. Fractional that his elbow was down before his knee. Uh, and how about the butt catch? That was unbelievable. I mean, it was just a crazy, crazy game. Now, that was the play when uh, the butt landed in in bounds. All right. It could be the knee. It could be the arm. It could be the elbow. But it landed before the rest of his body was out of bounds. Uh, tremendous, tremendous catch. Tremendous play. I think that was, uh, I'm not sure, was it nuts? I think it was nuts. And look at the receivers got hurt, and new guys came in. I thought the punt returner, uh, Braden Wozlowski, was great. Had three catches for 59 yards. Punt returner, Braden Wozlowski, was was really good out there, and he had a fantastic catch like a hockey goalie off a deflection. Uh, yeah, can you talk he, about he him? came in and made some plays. Uh, Henby had a touchdown with five catches, and Caden Prather had a TD where he got behind the uh, defensive backs. This game was out there for the taking, but Maryland wasn't up to the task. They lost. Indiana won 5-0. and Wayne Mason, back to you. Yeah, uh, Bruce, it basically, yes, the same thing, and it, it looked that way from here. The opportunities were there early, and then Mesa just didn't happen. And we talked about that because we shot a lot of the games standing next to each other, that, boy, you better score. It better not be another three and out, and then – well, it was. Yeah, and Ty Felton only two targets in the first half. I mean, they've done such a good job getting him the ball. And Caden Prather had a really strong game, and he did return to the game. Right. So I think that he'll be Funny. healthy going I'm, forward. I'm going to change the angle on this shot if we can. I'm going to point down to where I think the game actually changed. He's got it right there. Uh, they called the elbow out. I saw the knee in. They called the elbow out. I looked at it multiple times. Uh, of course, here's our shot of that in the background. It looked like a touchdown to me. It took him a while, and they said it wasn't a touchdown, and then that was that. Yeah, I think that you're looking at a team, um, for those of you who watch the Washington football team, it, it kind of reminds you of like that the Taylor Heineke type place where they can't get behind the sticks, and they have a quarterback who, who, who can run, but you really don't want him to take, you know, he's not a guy who's Jane Daniels or Lamar Jackson, he's not taking 20 carries if you need him to to win the game. And there's some mix where that kind of quarterbacking and that kind of offensive style will keep you in a lot of football games. And today, I think you can really say you were in this game. There was an opportunity to win this football game despite the wheels coming off the bus at the end. But the consistency in the running game, the consistency in your linemen, if those things start to fall apart, a quarterback and an offense that's designed the way this one is right now, is just not going to succeed drive in and drive out. And they have top-end talent, and those guys have just have to be force-fed the ball. Well put. Very well put. So as I jump back into frame here, at the end, Felton, Prather, Octavian Smith, not on the field. Preston Howard, not on the field. Trader, then Jacob at safety, both get hurt, not on the field. Wheatland. Bad shoulder. He actually, I think, got the last fumble recovery. Ty Shade Johnson, we saw him go off on crutches. This game ended up being a lot tougher than, than we thought it was. And, look, Locke said it could be one game, but you look at that list of yeah. injuries and you look at the schedule going forward, yeah. and that's kind of how if you don't want to put too much into this one, if those injuries do stick, uh, you're lucky to have the bye week coming up this week. Mm -hmm. Those injuries do stick. I, I don't really – I don't really know what else is what else is there. Your big player guys are gone, and you're really going to see the okay. test of the coaching staff and the play design. And I'm going to close with this because we're late in the post game where that where we didn't win. And yes, Loxie says just one more game. And I'm, I'm not looking to get in an argument. This is not an editorial. I, I guess it is because I'm speaking. It's not really about the game. I understand that the reason we play the games. I think it's from my point of view, is that we're here to win the games. And it does bother me when they say, well, it's just one more game. We didn't win this week, and maybe there's next week. 
that's not the level of program that I'm looking Thank for. Thank you for watching the Big Dog Post Game Show. We will not see you after Northwestern, but we will be back after the USC game in College Park. Good afternoon from Bloomington.